Hi guys and welcome to Creative Cakes by Sharon. Today I've got a special treat for you. I've collaborated with some of my girlfriends at the Dessert Network and together we've all chosen a popular board game to create either a cake or cookie or cookie board to celebrate the release of the new movie Game Night. So I'm going to leave the links to all of the videos at the end of my video so be sure to check them out. So my choice of board game for this collaboration was Jumanji. So it's not actually the board itself, it's actually the box because I thought it was so intricate and it's all about layers and textures and it's just a gorgeous box that the board game comes in. So I hope you're going to like it and let's get started. So I started with a 9 by 12 inch cake and I printed off a template of the Jumanji game box which I simply used to measure up the cake and cut it in half. I then filled and covered the cake using some whipped chocolate ganache. I simply used an offset spatula to smooth out the ganache, but I really wasn't too particular about getting a perfect finish on this cake because I wanted to leave it quite rustic. The great thing about this cake is that it's full of layers and textures, so if you're not feeling too confident about getting a perfectly smooth finish, this is a great cake for you to try. Guys, if you're new to my channel, welcome and thanks for tuning in. I make all sorts of creative cakes each week and I'd love for you to join me, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. So in preparation to cover the cake with fondant, here I've just brushed a little bit of water over the top surface of the cake. Not too much, just enough to make it a little bit tacky. Now I didn't have any pre-coloured brown fondant on hand, so I mixed up some red, orange and a little bit of black fondant together with a few drops of brown gel paste and I got this pale brown colour to cover the cake with. Now really, for all intents and purposes, and how we're going to decorate this cake today, you could simply use white fondant. It doesn't really matter so much because it's going to get painted over anyway. So here I have about two drops of brown gel colour to which I've added some dipping solution. Now this is the same as rose spirits or even vodka. Then using a paintbrush, I started to paint over the cake in long strokes. In fact, the more streaky the finish is, the better it's going to be to get a nice aged wood grain effect. Now the spirits dry fairly quickly and almost instantly because the alcohol evaporates. So once the entire cake was covered, I added two more drops of the brown gel paste to my little dish, but this time I didn't add any more spirits because I wanted to get a darker, deeper colour so that it would contrast well with what I had already painted on the cake. And I mainly focused on the edges because the centre was going to be covered up anyway. Now here I have the template and I've cut out a few of the leaves and mountains from the picture to use as a guide to cut the fondant. I used the template to mark an outline on the cake to help me place the pieces within the frame of the template. Before starting to stick all the pieces down though, I stuck a rectangular mustardy coloured looking piece of fondant down to provide the background. Then just using some water, I started to stick all the little bits and pieces into place that I had cut out. I found with this cake the one tool that was the most handy was a plain old toothpick. It was great to use to create lots of texture on the leaves and mountains and even the backdrop. And instead of fiddling around with a hundred little pieces of tiny fondant strips for the border, I simply used the toothpick to create this great pattern. I 
I used some dark grey fondant to create the background for the four icons on the board and once again use the toothpick to add some texture. Then came the most tricky part of this cake, actually creating those icons. Now lucky for me this design has a very rustic aged finish to it so instead of cutting out the pieces I decided to mould the basic shapes freehand. It was a little bit scary at first I must admit but I found it the easiest method. That way I was able to actually get some nice raised areas which added the three dimensional look that the real game box has. As I created each icon, I simply placed it up against the picture to get the rough shapes correct and add layers where I needed to. Once they were finished and stuck into place, I finished them off with a long strip of rolled fondant for the border. Now came the most fun part of this cake and that was turning this very dull looking canvas into something that looked more like the real thing. So here I used my edible chalks. Now guys, these are food grade and food safe and they're much the same as petal dusts. And there are so many colours that I had an absolute ball creating lots of different shades. I really enjoyed these chalks to create highlights as well as lots of dark shadows here and there. And it was really, it was pretty hard to get this wrong because the design is so forgiving. Once again, when I came to creating the title, I found it much easier to mould the letters rather than using the template to cut the letters out of a piece of flat fondant. And doing it this way meant that they looked more realistic. I also made a spear and then before popping the letters onto the cake I used a black piece of edible chalk to mark a straight line right through the centre of the letters because this would be where the box actually opens up in real life and it also acted to create a guide so that when I placed the letters on the cake they were in the correct spot. Once everything was stuck into place, I went back to add some detail to the letters with the edible chalks. It definitely needed to have an aged look and not be all bright and white and new looking. And finally, without trying to be too precise so that I could achieve that aged look, I used a black chalk to roughly mark the hinges and joints onto the box. Overall, in comparison to the real deal, I think it turned out pretty good. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly had lots of fun creating this Jumanji cake. It's one of those rare times where something imperfect actually looks perfect. Don't forget to now go and check out all of the other amazing game night cakes from my friends at the Dessert Networks. They are absolutely incredible and you won't believe your eyes. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel I create all sorts of fun cakes each week and you can be the first to see them. I hope you join me next time and thanks for watching.